ladies and gents, I present to you chicken nothing. <laughs> Uh, made by the creator of Cal Nothing. Shout out to Killer Cal who made that map a few months ago. Well, welcome to this masterpiece. Look at it. We got more chicken. Let's get started. I'll explain it. And the concept, of course, which is consistent throughout our community games, is there are kings, right? So the goal will be killing everyone else's kings if you would like to be victorious. But the players start off on these teensy little islands. You could maybe even call them eggs. It looks like Yellow hasn't figured this out. But anyways, you start off on these islands similar to Pilgrims. And then you can sail off and decide on where you want to be. So, um, you know, players are going to be moving around. You can see their little kings on the mini-map. Seems like the majority of the wood is on the, the chicken in the middle. This is a nice little touch. You've got the little chicken wang. You've got the little chicken toes. or Are they toes? Claws? Whatever. Yeah, next to the gold. Also, there's something special about the word chicken. I'm guessing that the map creator ran out of space and couldn't put the C in there. But then again, went for the, the double I. Who knows? But I kind of like the spelling. I'll roll with it. What's this over here? So I read the description and they said there's chicken eggs. So I'm going to assume that maybe these are eggs. Um, you know, and the whole idea, obviously, like the original concept of nothing maps, uh, as red and blue are going to try and go to the same exact area, which is funny. Um, <laughs> also, Yellow says, how does this start? Well, you got to move first. <laughs> but yeah, uh, you know, if you think back to like Forest Nothing and Stone Nothing and all of these games that we have done over the years and all these maps where it's just just one resource. Um, this is a little bit of a different speed where, you know, it's a, a actual map that's designed to create a normal game. But it just kind of looks like, you know, something a bit more unique. And now Yellow is going to move. I guess Yella didn't completely understand the concept here. So, um, let's get our introductions in. Some people are still running around the map. This is played on Explored, so the players will be able to see everything that we see, uh, except for, of course, like where people are located. Um, oh, I guess... Oh, wait a second. Oh, because of the change that maybe they had in the lobby browser, if you ally somebody, you immediately get vision of them here in Dark Age. Oh God, Bobster. Bobster. Dude, you got you cannot have your king underneath someone's town center here in Regicide. Buddy, what are you doing? Don't forget about your king as you run over here through the moor to drop a town center on that right side. That is just disaster waiting to happen. Okay, so let's get our introductions in. Again, I'm gonna do my best here. Players are still running around, okay? Uh, first off, we have John Perkins. Playing as the Bengalis here in the blue. Um, in the green, and this is a player who wanted to build the TC just right away. I'm going to struggle to say this. Mishimu, conquer all. Okay, lots of L's. Um, in the yellow, not too far away, to the front side of the chicken, we have Fat Cobra. Playing as the Teutons. Meanwhile, John Perkins says, uh, hey, Red, your king looks tasty. Don't want to be that guy. And Red's now running away. Uh, so nice, nice move there from John. In the orange, we have Slim Pie. Slim Pie is playing as the Vikings here. Uh, and for those wondering, as we see the little golden beak here of the chicken. Um, uh, oh, I also like the nice little touch here. Anyways, um, the... What was I talking about? Oh, yeah, the civilizations are random. Sorry, I'm so excited. I keep getting sidetracked with certain things. In the gray, we have the Couch Commander, who has played before... And so is John Perkins, I believe. I think the other two I mentioned are new so far. We've got the Magyars there. In the purple or magenta, we've got Sir H playing as the Franks. Um, in the... Where did he go? In the red, we've got Bobster playing as the Cumans. And then last but not least, we have Sir Detonate... That's a really tough word for me to pronounce. I know what the word means. Detonative? Is that even a word? I know it's played off of Detonate, but anyways, Sir Detonative Bouncer. And for those that don't know, this is Sir Explosive Hopper. And there's this whole thing, like, two months ago, where this guy in a game, in the whistleblower video, uh, you know, tried to, like, say that uh, the Discord system was designed and it was rigged to get Sir Explosive Hopper in games, which is this whole drama, because Sir Explosive Hopper had put in a request on the API or whatever, 
try and get into um my system like the rig the, the rigged bot system but then the bot's not rigged and long story short i know that didn't really clear things up long story short the system is not rigged okay it's not rigged it did not give any additional chances to anybody but of course like a month yes. after that we have community games and then sir explosive hopper actually got picked which doesn't exactly make my uh, statement seem believable, but that is just how things seem to go here. So uh, we got the eco stats at the bottom left. Uh, and there it is. And you can see that the players who got their TCs up faster are in much better positions, like crazy positions. We've got 20 villagers, 18 villagers. I guess fishing ships too, to be honest. And then some of these guys that walked across the map, they are way behind right now. Anyways, we have a lot of chat. Sir Explosive Hopper, he's known for his... He's, he's got plenty of legend videos. You can check those out. I highly suggest it. And uh, he's already talking to Bobster. And it does seem like these guys are going to be friends. And uh, Sir Explosive Hopper talking about being rigged in. So, let's talk about the map. Um, we've got... Um, what, what is this supposed to be? Eggs? We've got stone U shapes with the little fish on top. I mean, the fish on top is obviously very effective for a map gen to get food. I did notice that we have cows on sheep nothing. Also, there's a cow trapped in the trees there, sad times. Um, but yeah, still trying to figure out what exactly this is. It doesn't necessarily have to be anything, but it seems intentional. Hatching eggs in a nest? Oh! <laughs> Okay, Killer Cal is in my chat's the one who made it. That's pretty creative. Okay. The Killer Cal put a lot of time into it. The first one, Killer Cal didn't even tell me about. I just found it in the mod center and Cal wasn't here. And then Cal came in like a week later and was like, oh, oh my goodness, you covered that map. I'm, I'm so excited now. I like this. Red says, thank you for not killing my king. I owe you. Let's team. And I was thinking about that. You know, Blue had a decision to make. Kings do not explode here, by the way. So it's just standard regicide. And Blue had a decision to make there. Didn't kill Red's king. And now has a friend for life, possibly. Okay. Let's set up trade on this side of the map. So, you know, Hopper and Sir H, which is very confusing because you have a player named Sir Explosive Hopper and then Sir H. It's, it seems like it's the same. Anyways, these guys are going to be buddy-buddy. And so far, you know, I, I've never seen Green play before. But Green, who's gone for a town center position that many might disagree with, has actually been killing it because of the addition of fishing ships. Yes. Also, it looks like there's gold over on this side of the map. Uh, what do you guys think about the map? I think the map looks really cool. I, I There's something exciting about the look of these maps with the mini-map, you know? Or I guess we could zoom out and see it. But it's really cool to be able to zoom out and see all these different things and a definitive shape for the map, but then also have all these different things you could pay attention to. Like, look, there's stone around the tail. Thank you for not being as graphic with the whole, you know, like, uh, butt region of the chicken this time. I appreciate that. I, I guess this is supposed to be similar, but just not as brown and sludgy this time. So that's uh, that's pretty cool. All right. Not bad, not bad, not bad. But yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking the fishing ships could eventually lead to fish traps. And Couch Commander, I believe this is intentional because he's been around long enough to know this, says, hey man, just to you, you want to be friends. And this is just a super easy way to make people think you love them. But Grace said that to everybody. So look, they all respond only to him. That's perfect. <laughs> hey Gray, yes, let's be friends. Red says, I'm down. Purple says, sure. Let's do it. I like being friends. All these people want to be buddies with Gray now, and Gray didn't even have to switch the chat settings. That's a little Diplo hack for you right there. It's the chicken's back feather. Yeah, it could be. I'll be honest. It's been a while since I've seen a chicken, you know? I don't really run into, my, into chickens in my day-to-day. -day. However, in my farming simulator land which I used to do like once a week. I stopped ever since Christmas. We'll get back into it this next week. But we have 360 chickens, guys. And every month, they make a lot of eggs. We make good profit on those eggs. 
We've got nice land. We've got all, we've got a nice little windmill that gives us a nice profit. I love my farming simulator. Very chill. Nice to mix it up every now and then. Hmm. Isn't your nickname chicken? Okay, should we rip the band-aid off and tell the chicken story while we have the time? I don't want to miss any of this chat. Wait, I like this though. Couch Commander says, I've watched all your videos, lol. Great content. Let's do something fun this game. And meanwhile, Explosive Hopper is like asking what the other person thinks of Gray. The thing that's tough with Hopper games and some Diplo games in general is there's a lot of chat. I love this. Do you think I could have some of that chicken foot later? Might need some gold. <laughs> the fact that that makes sense to, to me, but also to you as the viewer, does that make you question your sanity a little bit? We are watching other people play a video game requesting access to chicken feet. All right, just let that sink in. On paper, that's pretty bad. But okay. Still very curious about green situation. Maybe in Castle Age, what Green could do is maybe get TCs up elsewhere. Mm, if they try anything funny, I'll let you know. So it does seem like teal and purple are going to be buddies for life. But yeah, okay, so let me let me tell this story. I've told this story before. If I do miss chat throughout this, I'll try and go back. I did also notice this, by the way. You've got some relics over here, which is a nice touch. I remember the other version had relics towards the corner. It doesn't look like this one has that. So, um... First off, I'll start this story by saying I'm I'm thankful that I'm not doing this any longer. Um, so yes. that's thanks to you guys, everyone who's interested in watching the content, whatever I'm putting out, and has been for years. I eventually was able to, you know, start doing this full time. But one of the jobs that I did when I wasn't really sure, uh, you know, I, I I basically dropped out of college, had no clue what direction I had for life, and just needed a job. One of the jobs I found was a call center job, and there's no shame in having a call center job. But if you know how a call center works is you're sitting there in your cubicle receiving calls all day, talking to people on the phone, right? And call center jobs can be very different. Uh, you know, I imagine there a lot, some of it's sales and whatnot. In my case, uh, my job was dealing with billing. So people who had questions about their bills. Now, that's kind of already bad because if people are calling in about their bills, usually they're unhappy with how much they're paying or they've been charged too much in their eyes. But I also worked for one of the most hated companies in the United States. That company's name is Comcast. Uh, and if you don't know, they do like internet and cable and whatnot. And this tricky thing is, is they kind of have a bit of a monopoly. Yes. So like in most cases, it's like you can't get any other companies. So you're stuck with them. And then, you know, they might charge outrageous prices. And you get really upset about it. And then you call in. And then you have T90 on the other line. So I was, what, like 19 years old at that time. Uh, so 10 years ago, this happened. And so, you know, it just wasn't a, it just wasn't a fun time. Like, as positive as I try and be as a person, uh, you know, you, you just had all these people being so rude and mean. And it's a sucky situation because they, they see you as the enemy, even though you're just a person on the other end of the line trying to do a job, right? So anyways, <clears throat> so, um, you know, I... I did that for a while and um you know one evening before a work day so i i would had to be in at 8 30 i remember okay it started to snow and it started to snow a lot and um it got to a point around midnight where i was like oh there's absolutely no way they're gonna have us go into work i i remember i had no more call out days for like the rest of the year because i did that a lot <laughs> So, you know, I had to go into work, otherwise I'd be in trouble. So, like a responsible adult that I was, like 19 year old, is that really an adult? I don't know. Legally, I guess, yes, I was an adult. I decided to stay up all night till like 5 or 6 a.m. playing, I think, Call of Duty. I don't remember what game, but I was definitely playing on a console. Because I just assumed, yeah, okay, I'm not going to have work tomorrow because of the snow forecast, right? And, um,. So I, I did wake up. I set an alarm at like 7.30 or 7.45 so I could wake up and just confirm that work was called off. And of course I wake up and it's like, you're still got to be at work, right? They, they didn't cancel it at all. 
And there's snow on the roads everywhere. There's like, I live in an old country town. There's no plows or anything yet. I was just like, are you kidding me, man? So, I'm like on one, maybe two hours of sleep. I've got a heavy mix of self-loathing because I hate myself for staying up all night, but also just like hating my job, like pissed at the people who decided that we would have to drive in in those conditions. I just, I was in a crappy mood, right? And so I get in my car and I'm going through all this snow. I hit the highway. I'm the only car on the highway. Like the loneliest highway you've ever seen. Nobody, it was a Saturday morning. No one's driving. And there I go. And I'm driving off to work. 30 minute drive. Actually, it probably like a 45 minute drive because of where we lived and the snow and everything. And so just like, ah, uh, just, just one of those days, right? I'm sure you guys can relate. Sometimes you're just like, this is just going to be a crappy day. And so I get in, I get into the center and this is like a massive center. They must've had like a thousand plus employees, just cubicle after cubicle after cubicle. And like nobody who worked the same shift of me was in. They all had called out. They didn't even go in. So now I'm in there. I'm like, well, should I go home? No. A supervisor saw me, you know, he's like, Hey, thanks for coming in. I was like, Oh, I should have just stayed at home anyways. Well, anyways, um, you know, uh, I, you know, I just hated my life. Everything horrible was happening. And I, you know how sometimes your mind is just like determined to have a no good rotten day? You know what I mean? Like we can never have that thought and say, let's try and turn this day around. It's like your mental health makes you think, you know what? Let's make this day worse. This is just a bad day. And you should think worse things about everything. I don't know if that's just me, but like that's precisely the headspace that I was in in that moment, okay? And I worked 10 hour shifts. So from 8.30 to 7.30, I was gonna be there listening to people get angry at me and yell about their bills. And my job was basically to try, but gotta save the company money, right? So anyways, I sit down. There's a couple other people around me doing their thing. I pick up the phone on this awful day and uh, I'm like, thank you for calling Comcast. My name is Tristan. You know, how can I help you? Did you say your name is Chicken? This old man on the other end of the line. You got to understand, like, when they call, their profile pops up. You can see, like, how old they are, where they're from, whatever. Because you got to help them. This old man's on the other end of the line. And he's, like, calling me Chicken. And I'm in a crappy mood. I'm just like... Phew. Jeez, is this all I'm going to deal with today? I'm like, no, my name is Tristan. How can I help you? This old guy goes, your name is Chicken? Well, I'll be Chicken. I've lived 78 years on this earth and I have yet to speak to a man named after a farm animal. <laughs> now, I've told this story before and I could tell a lot of my viewers have already heard this story before. But man, this never gets old. He got so excited that he had encountered a human named Chicken. He, his hearing was so bad that even after I clarified, because I enunciate pretty well, right? I don't mumble that much. He thought my name was Chicken, and he just ran with it. <laughs> and so I, I went from being in the most dejected mood possible to, like, throwing my headset off. I'm, like, half falling out of my chair, losing my mind laughing. I had to, like, be like, hold on, sir, one second, got to put you on hold, like, you know, mute him. I'm like losing my crap. My supervisor's looking at me like, what's happening? Blah, blah, blah. And uh, and yeah, so then my, the rest of my day was great. This this old man, I believe he was in Baltimore. I, I don't remember exactly. Uh, he just, he made my day. I'll always remember that. <laughs> and he was, it, it's so cute, man. Like he was calling in to see if the service center would be open because he had an extra remote or something he needed to drop off. Like he didn't, he didn't have a computer. He couldn't Google it. No, he had to call, you know, like that's where this guy was at. So anyways, that's the chicken story. And so when I saw this map, I knew I was going to have to yes. tell that story, but I still maintain, right? Like I know my grandparents, I know they would do it. I really hope that like every holiday when the whole family would get together, you know how like old people repeat the same stories. I mean, geez, I repeat the same stories. I can't imagine what I'll be like when I'm old. I really hope that that guy at Thanksgiving, Christmas dinner, whatever, 
would be like, did I ever tell you guys about the time that I talked to a man named Chicken? And then like everyone around the table like rolls their eyes like, no, you didn't talk to a man named Chicken. And he's like, yes, I did. Yes, I did. I made him say it three times. His name was definitely Chicken. Like, <laughs> I just, I would absolutely love that, like that, for that to be a thing in this man's family, so. Anyway, shout out to that guy. Also, shout out to Green for his very straight fish traps. My goodness. Anyways, uh, that was a funny story. Also, the cows are walled in here. Man, Green is a really interesting player. T90, I literally heard this story for the fourth or fifth time. It's still funny every time. It's a great story to retell, man. It's a great story. I, I was in an awful headspace. And the rest of my day was the best. So, like, my supervisor pulled up the call. There's, like, recordings of calls. That way, if, like, you know, you had an employee, you know, mistreating you or, you know, you said something bad, like, there's record of it. You know how they always say that the calls are recorded? Well, guess what? We went back and we listened to the call. And he was laughing, too. Like, it was a big hit. So, yeah, that's, that's the chicken story. So, now we've got chicken nothing. We'll see who's going to win this. Let's talk about positions here. There's been a lot of chat, okay? And the, the other, like, extra funny thing here about this whole thing is these people get in these games, and they're just like, oh my god, I cannot wait for T90 to talk about all my sneaky chat. And they're gonna load this up later when it's on YouTube. And I'm just gonna be telling the chicken story and missing all their witty comments. I did notice this. Purple wasn't happy. Orange took the stone. And so Orange said, repurposing for further conquest, but only your enemies. And Purple says, right answer. Okay. And now Teal is asking Gray for the relics. So in terms of the favorites right now, Blue and Teal are, are very fi far up there with their eco. Uh, and the other thing I like about their positions is that they're kind of separate from other people. Um, and they have a corner, too. And corners can always be very valuable. Like, John having this corner is going to be huge. This is a trade hub. People are going to trade this direction. And then also, the edge of the map keeps you protected. You're not going to be surprised by anything over there. Because Teal just sent Gray some resources, which is interesting. There's a lot to be said about Explosive Hopper. But I think, like, the one thing that is always consistent is he is a true ally to the people he plays with. Until he isn't. <laughs> But he's nice until it benefits him, you know? <laughs> like, there always is a point. He's never been super backstabby, but... Okay. This game may be monitored or recorded for quality assurance. Yeah. Uh, somebody asked where that was. That was in Harrisburg, PA. I know there's quite a few viewers from, like, from Pennsylvania, because I've, I've heard people say that over the years. I don't know if that center's still there, but... Uh, that's where I was working at that time. So, civ-wise, I would love to have the Franks. Cheap castles everywhere. Paladin. I mean, Franks are Franks, as we always say. Tutans also could be really good. Yellow's had some time to build up here. Still playing catch-up. I, I could kind of tell when Yellow stood there for three minutes and didn't do anything at the start that Yellow would be a little bit more inexperienced. Um, but, yeah, we'll see. Yes. Yeah, everything's all jumbled over here. A lot of these players are right next to each other, and I... Green's start was really good, but I think what Green really needed to do was get Vils elsewhere. Like, this is good. You need to get access to the chicken feet, man. Or the chicken eggs, or like, you need stone and gold. There's a lot of stone and gold over here. There's not much gold. I guess there is gold here, though. I guess this is the beak. Um. From New Jersey, from Philly. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, I would... I, I would... I don't want to say expect a Regicide Rumble in 2023, because if I don't do it, I'm going to look like a liar, but I absolutely want to do it. I'm hoping to do two, but there's a lot going on in 2023 from what I'm hearing, and a lot of things in the works, so we'll see. You want a Fist Trap update? Yeah. It is possible that while the Fist Traps themselves were all in order, that the fishing ships will just bump into each other with this. I'm not a big fish trap expert, but it does kind of seem like that's the case. I like how green just randomly moved the cows here. It's interesting. You live in Maryland? You used to live near Harrisburg? Gotcha.
But anyways, like, you know, as we close in on the whole chicken story thing, um, I, you know, it wasn't the job that I had before I ended up eventually giving this a go at full time. But I think it's worth restating how thankful I am that I get to do this. I have so much fun. And for the most part, <laughs> there's always exceptions. But the Age of Empires community is super nice. And, um, you know, to put a lot of passion and energy into something... I probably put too much energy and too much time into this still. Um, I probably should chill out more, but I just, I don't know. I just, there's always people interested in what I'm doing and I enjoy doing it and I'm constantly trying to push myself to be more creative and stretch the game to greater limits and show it to more people. And the fact that, you know, there's so many people out there who enjoy it is really motivating. So thank you. Um, very glad that I'm not listening to people yell at me about, uh, you know, Comcast bills and uh, whatever else I ended up getting into, so. Now, John Perkins is awful quiet in here, should I worry? There, there is a fair point to be said about this. Like, John ha is top scorer and hasn't necessarily been talking to people about how they're going to be buddy-buddy for the rest of the game. That's normally a recipe for disaster. You have to be really careful about that. You, at the very least, want to have some weaker players who are going to have your back. Players who are, you know, have a healthy fear of what you could do to them. But feel like their best chance of going in the long term is if they're buddy with you. My girlfriend happy, I protect cow friends. <laughs> Does your girl have... Is, maybe, maybe his girlfriend's vegan. <laughs> hey babe, I'm not killing the cows in the game. Oh, thank you, honey. <laughs> What's happening right now? All right. Well, shout out to Green. All right. My girlfriend happy. I protect cow friends. Well, that explains it. I was very confused why that was happening before. Orange, nice farms. We cool? And then Orange says, yeah, we're cool. Learn from T90. Where are these farms? Yeah, they're good farms. They're very good farms. I thought there was going to be a joke made at my expense there. Hmm. I mean, green did fish like crazy. And fish traps are going to be helpful in the long run. I also like this from John. John's been sneakily over here taking some gold. Yeah, just destroy, defish the entire world. <laughs> you know what's funny? Actually, last night my fiance asked me if there were whales in Age of Empires 2. And I actually don't know. Does anyone know if there's whales? I know there's dolphins. So when we first started talking, she was, like, still trying to wrap her head around, like, what I do. Uh, and she, you know, searched a couple videos. And she is a marine biologist, so she asked me, what is dolphin nothing? And I then had to explain to this girl that I was interested in that the whole concept of the map is you just devour all the dolphins. Which, you know, wasn't the most exciting concept, I imagine, for her. There's no whales. There is an AWE3. Okay. Yes. But yeah, I know there's dolphins, and, and it's actually really annoying when dolphins are on the map because their little, their little squeaks, when there's a lot of them, can get really obnoxious. So, Teal has sent resources to multiple players here. Sent resources to Gray. Sent resources to Green now. No, man, just want long-term allies. Can you take this stone? So, you remember what I just mentioned? Like, you want to have buddies in the long run. And, you know, Gray it might not seem like a super valuable ally right now, but it is someone that might fight to the death for Sir Explosive Hopper. Who's gone full boom, by the way. 192 eco. Not leaving much pop space for army, but... Also, has been sneaky. We've got some Yurumi swordsmen inside of the castles here. That's not where the king is. The king is actually moving right now. Hmm. Did you know there was a whale with French citizenship? Yeah, probably someone's mom. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm I'm 29 years old. The mom jokes have to stop. They're not funny anymore. You set me up. <clears throat> probably someone from France watching at the moment. So sorry to, you know, that person. But um, <clears throat> no, I did not know that. I did not know that. Question for T90 Fiance. Are killer whales actually afraid of pilot whales? I do not know. What's interesting about her job, so like right now she she it's all research oriented, and so you know uh, 
any type of skeleton, uh, any type of, of dead sea mammal or sea creature, she will be all over and she wants to scan it and get data on it. But like, it's kind of twisted where like, you know, from the research standpoint, you get excited when you find a dead thing. <laughs> well, she doesn't jump up and down like, yay, that, that whale died. But it is kind of how it works from my perspective. It's like, if something washes up dead, that benefits research. <laughs> but you love these things, so you don't want them to die. Again, I'm I'm getting all this from the outside. I'm probably uh, misportraying the situation, but... Remember that game on Cal Nothing? I think it was the first game with Cal Nothing, where there was a lot of stone and the Frank player had 50 castles. Well, Sir H is looking to catch up to that number. I mean, holy. There's a lot of stone over here earlier. And there still is plenty of stone, but I mean, a lot of it's disappearing with the gold as well, which is why they're trading. And chicken has been devoured at this point as we have a fight. All right, battle. Green is being attacked here by Slim Pie. And this is awful for Green. And I, I, honestly, Celts, if they don't have Siege, do actually really struggle against the Vikings. Uh, Wood Raiders do get eaten alive by the Berserks, and these are elite Berserks with almost full upgrades. So, you know, Green obviously got some props with the girlfriend with the whole Cal saving thing, but wasn't doing a whole lot of chatting here, and, and maybe Orange just wants his space. And I think this could be the end for Green, a pretty brutal first community game. I think it's the first community game for Green, but the King will still be alive. The King is in the transport ship sailing away. Hmm. Now we'll see this castle go down. A lot of that eco is going to go down. Now, green does have this eco. I also love how the wood is being chopped almost in a perfect circle here. That just is very pleasing to me. So green could maybe live to fight another day. And if green lives to fight another day, maybe come back to haunt orange later on. We'll see. The king is sailing away. I think orange might have noticed it. And yeah, Orange has vision on that transport ship and is making a run for it. The real issue for Green is you still need Army to be here because Orange could just run this way. Hey, Cobra, I can sling you stone. Do you want? I just realized you don't have much next to you. No response from Cobra whatsoever. There's the castle from Green. There's the King. King's still just hanging out there. Orange will obviously clear out the rest of Green's eco. And some people might see Orange as a bit of a threat now. Orange is getting a little antsy, ready to kill some things. And, uh-oh. Yellow is going to be the next person to be attacked. Makes sense, right? Yellow also hasn't said much. Yellow is also in a weak position, I think. Orange is a player who wants to have a powerful position in the long term. And I don't know, like, will Fat Cobra be able to react here? Fat Cobra was 69 eco. Nice. Where's the king? Oh, the king's in the TC. Now we've got some cavalier coming over, so that's that's good work from yellow. Go for some cavalier. Yellow also has a TC over here, so could run away, but the cavalier is not in high enough numbers to deal with these berserks. The Vikings love to pressure, man. And uh, berserk is a really good unit if you can get to it. The weakness of berserks would be if there's a lot of archers or gunpowder on the field. Oh, King is still in the TC. Fat Cobra needs to realize the situation here and get away. Oh my goodness, dude. This, <laughs> These fortifications. We should have done Exploding Kings, man. <laughs> it's not hard to get resources on this map. Let's put it that way. Red says, can you get off my stone to orange? Dude, do you really want to say that to this player? King's on the move, by the way, if you didn't catch it. So this will be two players that Orange will weaken, but not kill. Interesting to think about. And look at this. John says, perhaps Orange needs punishing for bullying Green soon. Orange, let's be Grens. I can sl sl king you res. And Bobster turns on Orange. I think it was just upset that Orange was taking some of the stone. To be fair to Orange, I think the villagers just kind of wandered over there. Whoa, 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 whoa. Gray kills yellow. 
And oh, a detail I forgot until this very moment is when a player's king is killed on this map, all their buildings get destroyed. That's actually a pretty nice touch. So if you were to kill Purple's king right now, he'd lose like 40 castles. Well, and the stables too. Okay, well, Fat Cobra gets picked off. I mean, Couch Commander over here is very vulture-like, just waiting for the others to weaken it. Or maybe that's not a vulture. Is that a hyena? No, hyenas fight in packs. I don't know, okay? I have do I've done no research on this. But the point I'm trying to make is someone else did all the work and then Gray just waited scavenger-like just getting that kill. A red upset with orange over some stone is trying to use elite kip checks here. And I think orange is in a great position to push. I mean, the kip checks don't seem good enough. Also, castles are going to start to go down. Yeah, I was thinking vulture, but I think vultures, vultures will normally... I guess they would go after things if they're partially dead. Every time I see a vulture, though, that everything's been killed already, you know? Okay, sending says purple. And they're talking about... I don't know exactly who these two are talking about right now. Red says, help, orange is bullying me. Will anyone care about that? Now, Purple did say he was just going to send five Paladins into someone's eco. So, I'll look for the Purple Paladins. Red attacks first. Sorry, friend. That's true, actually. Red, you did kind of start this over 300 stone. I'm going to keep it on the military tab now. I think the eco count isn't as important. And, whoa! Look at these elephants, man. I know people question the Bengalis a little bit on Arabia or in the early game, but I think the Bengali late game is pretty crazy. These elite elephant archers are no joke. And purple has now turned on blue. So that must have been who they were talking about. Purple is just clearing out blue's villagers over here. Blue might not notice that. Blue is trying to defend red at the moment. And I think the elephant archers are going to be a good enough unit to do that. Though I, I think this is the first time I've actually seen these units engage against each other. Ah, hey, thanks, man. Want to get someone. Yeah, let's kill Blue. Okay, so the goal for them is to kill Blue. And it, it seems like a pretty good goal because John is, is far away from everybody else. And John's also the top scorer right now. And John's clearly a pretty good player with a pretty good civilization to boot. So, I mean, Orange might be regretting the situation now. Slim Pie's got the castle still, but maybe not for very long, and the Berserks just don't seem to really scale that well now. Like I said, big archer masses are really problematic for Berserks. Blue, I think Purple wants to kill you. Okay, so this is Sir Explosive Hopper doing Hopper things. Remember, he was part of the conversation about killing Blue just seconds ago to both players. And, and we just see a response of yep. Red is very happy to have been saved here. Red will probably fight with Blue the rest of the game. So I think that Blue will at least have Red to defend him. And Red just says, you're a legend, bro. And Purple's just cleared up the villagers here. That's all Purple said he was going to do. Purple's not actually making a main push towards Blue. But the trade. Oh, man. Oh, losing the trade would be disastrous here. Because purple didn't have castles here, right? So unless teal turned, it wouldn't be an issue. But purple making the castle wall here means all the trade's going to go down here for John. And Grace is just passing red. Can I go to the military mode, maybe? Forgive me, guys. I don't do this that frequently. That's not what I wanted. Maybe this? Uh, military, resource, military. Okay, this is what I wanted to see. It, with all the castles, it's still kind of hard to see things, but it makes it a bit easier. I might uh, flip back and forth between those modes. So, the thing about the Elephant Archer, guys, is that... Like any Elephant unit, actually, if you have the time and resources, it becomes very difficult to stop. The weakness of it is time and resources, but it's an insane unit. Like, I remember when the devs buffed the Castle Age version, and I was like, it's a, kind of a slippery slope. Like, if you keep making these things cheap, 
it might be more realistic in the mid game and then it might be even crazier in the late game but you know in community games so many different things can happen i think realistically what you need against mass elephant archers is a lot of siege combined with things and gray now turns on john as well and remember gray he's kind of going with whatever teal says here and yellow says i tried but it all went downhill when i couldn't find the starting point in the beginning broken heart oh don't be upset fat cobra don't be upset there's more opportunities okay red now defending john will fight back against purple all expected right we have a king from hopper running to the middle and i think hopper's just realized this but surely that's a mistake what's happening there where would that be going again all the fights heading over towards john here I'm still very confused why Hopper's sending his king this way. It wouldn't make sense for him to give leverage to anybody else. It's just not a good play. But it's not like he's sending any other units this way. If it was a mistake, you would think that he set his gather point for his castles with army heading that way, but no. So Hopper could be making a pretty big mistake for a player as experienced as he is. Good push back here, by the way from John and from Red as, as they're clearing up some of Purple's castles. I think they're going to need to change where the trade is. And wait a second. Hopper is actually sending this in, in, to the shoreline where there's Teresa die. Oh, it all makes sense. Ah, so feels like the, the lands could be a little vulnerable with all this action, huh? Oh, man. I mean, this ship is unique to the Dravidians. You don't see it all the time. It's a very good, tanky ship. It's kind of like a turtle ship and a... Uh, it's like a turtle ship and a longboat combined. And fight still continues here. And it's a grind, as Orange is asking, Blue, are we still friends? But it's not saying that to Blue. It's saying that to Sir Explosive Hopper right now. What do you guys think of the military minimap? You like it? Is this better? That's kind of... That's funny. <laughs> More... You can still kind of see what it was and supposed to say at the start there. I think I might use it from time to time. I actually prefer the, the craziness of the original minimap. I just realized there's not a lot of wood to be chopped. I'm going to have to head this direction for the wood. The fat cobra just says gray is evil. Yeah, listen, I mean, sorry the map was so confusing at the start, but, you know, there's always opportunities to play again, and that is a storyline, too. Like, even if you like, get killed off early, it's a storyline, because Gray clearly has shown that, like, he's okay with, with taking easy snipes. He's not to be trusted. I knew this was going to happen. Red says, with you, Blue, till the end. And I respect that. I respect that a lot, because I think it doesn't make Red's life easier to continue to fight with Blue. Like, I think that the smart play... Oh, my God. We're going to see a wonder, by the way. I know Hopper's long-term plan. I can already feel it. Wonder victory is possible. Look at how much population Hopper is sending here on water, guys. Hopper is going to go full population on water. And these villagers are being transported to build a wonder here. Guarantee it. And then everyone, all of the, the six players that are remaining are going to have to turn against him. And it's going to be crazy wonder defense. Nobody seems to see it coming. And I, I make... I, I try and get Wonder Victory in these games for a reason. And some unique things can happen from time to time. It would be very reminiscent of another uh, Hopper win that he's had in the past. But also like some of the old classic Blue Coffee wins. Where he had a Wonder Victory or two. What's going to be important is whenever he builds this... He's taking his time right now. But whenever he builds this thing... He needs to make sure all of his villagers can surround it. Do you actually want it to be one tile off both sides of the edge of the map so the villagers can fit? But then also, all the other players, they need to be ready. Let's look at his resources real quick. Oh yeah, he can build it. He's got the thousand stone and the wood and the gold. Um, All the other players need to lay down their arms and they need to go after Hopper right away. There's big disturbances, right? Like the, all these people here... They don't like each other. And Green, by the way, still in this game with this Navy. 
And maybe the only threat to this. Actually, I think green wanted to maybe use the cannon galleons to go against blue. But yeah, Hopper's going to clear that. And there's the wonder. Now, wait, blue's making a wonder as well. So blue is maybe seeing the, you know, the writing on the wall here that the game is going to end for him. So this is actually a wonder race. And Hopper is winning it right now. Dang. Now, pay attention. Because Hopper doesn't actually have the same amount of villagers. He's got 39 villagers. And here we have 46 villagers. Oh my god. Oh, if only these trees weren't here. Oh, this is so close. Like, blue should have more vills. But I think blue needs to try and, like, click this vill to the tree. Get a little closer and fit one more in. But I think either way, I think blue passes Hopper and it kind of ruins Hopper's plan. Or it helps Hopper because everyone's going to have to attack blue first. Yo. <laughs> Yo, that's amazing. Yes. Look how close it is. I, I still can't really tell. More villagers have come in now. <laughs> Who's winning this? What in the world? You can't make this up. Okay, so John is winning by maybe like half a percent right now. What? Dude, don't move a thing, dude. Do not move a muscle. Dang. I mean, leave it to community games for crazy things like this to continue to happen. I've been doing it for so long now. So they, they can't see the percentage. Uh, while they're playing. So they don't actually know how close it is. This is just capture age. I wonder what the strat is though. W isn't that actually good for Hopper here to be second place? Because you still have to wait a long period of time with the wonder. I mean, uh, then again, like Blue actually has kind of won his fights. Hopper can't help either. Okay, so 300 year countdown for Blue. The players will see that. And then it's now a 300 year countdown for, for Sir Explosive Hopper. Dang. Also, let's compare the look to, of the wonders. Here we have the Dravidian wonder. Oh! <laughs> oh, man. It was a blood sacrifice. Okay, well, that's sad. That's pretty cool, though. Not the, not the dying of innocent villagers who built that thing over the course of their entire lives, but the wonder. I've actually never seen the Dravidian wonder before. It's very cool. I like the little statue here. Is that a cow? Kind of looks like a cow. This is nice. Looking nice. And then over here, we've got the Bengali wonder. Which I somehow recognize. Okay, I join you guys. The three amigos, says Orange. So, red is like, let's go blue. Blue, I'm your buddy. Right? So, he's, he's on team blue. He's okay with blue winning because blue saved him earlier. It is a wonder race, guys. Not the game mode, but an actual wonder race. And then Hopper deleted those villagers, not to be cruel, but Hopper wants this win. And so Hopper needs population space, and Hopper's going to push. Can Blue win this? The clock is ticking, guys. The game is going to be won or lost with wonders here. Love to see it. Chicken nothing. Great game. Great map. Looked pretty cool. But now we have a pretty epic battle here. I mean, it's going to be gray, purple, both with paladins and siege onagers, and then some Yurumi swordsmen from Hopper. And I also noticed Hopper is massing trebuchets from these castles. And oh my goodness. I mean, Hopper could actually so easily take that out. Like, Hopper, if this castle was in here, could just run in, take out a wall piece, and treb that down. Also, remember earlier I talked about the weakness of elephant archers against siege onagers? Let's see. I think you have to go for siege. <laughs> this unit's insane, dude. It's not even that bad. <laughs> uh, dude, man. I mean, semi-decent micro from both players here. I mean, you can see John. He hasn't really microed down the rest of the siege onagers. Yeah, maybe weakness isn't the word. I mean, Siege Onagers is expensive too, right? 
Feels like you need more. Well, if they continue to get hits, it's going to add up. And, okay, there goes that castle now. Now, again, it gets interesting, though, because if Hopper takes out this wonder now, then all the focus is on him, and the others have time to, to change their allegiances against Hopper. The best part about this from Blue and Teal, though, is the fact that they have their kings next to their wonders. Because there'd be nothing worse than having your king exposed at home while you have a wonder on the other side of the map. These guys are talking about team victory. I think that's not possible here. I mean, normally there is a way to select allied victory. This is what they're talking about. But everyone has to select it. And I don't think there's any way to know if the person with the wonder has selected that. Okay, they're talking about it. So apparently the checkbox is there. And I think that's fair. Like, normally I don't like allied victory. But in this case... People are helping Blue and helping Teal. So it would only make sense that they share that victory. Not entirely sure, lol, if it works. Yeah, me either. But, you know, the push runs come is still coming through the middle. Red is crumbling and crumbling fast here against Gray. And then on the left side, the Trebs are already here. I mean, that's going to be the wonder gone. Sir Explosive Hopper made that look very easy. Almost like it was planned. And Hopper's Wonder is still going to be standing here. And again, it gets interesting because people should be talking now and saying, Hey, let's not let this Hopper guy get it. Hopper, man, dude, it's, it's his water play worked out perfectly. He knew immediately what to do after getting his own Wonder up. And now he's the only Wonder standing. With 200 years remaining... Will gray and purple change their strats? Will people message them and say, hey, like, we can't let this guy win. I don't care who wins, but we can't let him win. Or will people be happy with him because he sent resources to them, has been nice to them? Okay, boys, got his wonder. Again, this is like a team thing. Now we just defend this deal. Yeah, it's like a very, very much a team thing for them right now. I think the instinct for you as a viewer and for myself as a caster is to want them to break that relationship apart. It's sad what we desire, right? We, we, we desire that their friendships break. But, you know, in a community game, that's really the most entertaining thing. We like the... Oh my god, we like the scorpions! I was gonna say we like the plot twists. Can you sling me, guys? Yeah, he is low on gold right now. He did send everything at that wonder then. By the way, Red's King is also in the north with blue. And Purple says, To be honest, I have no idea if that team victory actually works, so good on you if it doesn't, and I got played 11. Yeah, so it seems to be that Purple's just going to go with it. And John says we have to YOLO Teal's King. And Red says, okay. So, I mean, that would be quite a YOLO. I don't know how they're going to get there. It feels like there's ships everywhere. And red doesn't really have a lot. I think a valid attempt here, and it still might not work. But I think a valid attempt would be to, to say publicly right now, like, hey guys, go kill his king. Go take his wonder. Or go kill his base or something. Like, obviously if that happens, it gets interesting because Hopper might lose his entire eco. But Hopper doesn't really have that much eco. Hopper has kind of thrown everything into winning with that wonder there. You would need to somehow get a dock up, which is doable here, maybe. And then you could stream your units through. But, I mean, how many does he have? He has 126 Theresa today. Oh, man. Making my game lag just looking at this. Yeah, King is right next to the Wonder, exactly. Where's Green's Force? Oh, my goodness. How would Kelt Scorpions do against those ships, I wonder? Green is still a little bit of a wild card for me. Orange, too. I mean, we haven't really seen them do much because they were weakened so much early on. Green might honestly just want revenge on Orange, to be honest. And I wouldn't blame him. Because remember, Orange was the one who, who cleared out green earlier. We have 150 years to find out what else is going to happen here. A lot of this is about proving a point. He did shot castle my shoreline. Okay, so yeah, orange is like 
mainly focused on taking out Teal, I guess. Are there cannon galleons for... There has to be cannon galleons somewhere, right? Ah, Blue's coming in with the elephant archers. It's going to take a long time if he does it that way. It's just annoying that they're trying to do that and then Gray's still attacking them, right? Is Purple making a play? Doesn't seem like it. We will see. Guys, how cool is that? After all these years that we got to see like a legit wonder race there. And <laughs> Hopper made it look too easy taking it out later on, but still that was really cool. Yeah, there's Cannon Galleon for Orange. Orange is going to try something. Yeah, you do have these little crossings here. Or whatever you could call them. It's rivers, I guess. Streams. But orange, green doesn't like you. Green doesn't like you. I would stay away. There's the stockpiles for people asking. It's not that crazy for anybody. Blue's probably in the best spot. But at least, like, gray and purple have long-term trade, it seems. Just don't kill the cows, Hopper, okay? Those cows need to be protected. Very important to green. The push continues from purple and then gray on blue, so it's going to have blue distracted. We're at 110 years. Again, the teams basically are Hopper, Sir H, and then Couch Commander. And then you've got red, blue, and orange. Those three players want to kill Hopper's king. But they're being attacked by the other two. So it's really hard to get things together here. Uh, the other three, actually, because green is also here. Red's going to try a transport. I don't think it's going to work at all. <laughs> Chuck just says good luck, sir. Which is fair. Shout out to the elephant archers, though. They've actually been doing a pretty decent job. Again, green's just upset because earlier orange decided to attack. Hey, sorry, was busy with red. Credit to Hopper here. He's asking Gray if Allied Victory is enabled. So he, he seems to be trying to do Allied Victory because he knows his teammates have played a role in this. Instead of just taking the victory fully for himself. Oh my... Oh my god. You don't get to see Scorpions flattened by Onagers every day. And you don't get to see Berserks flattened by Scorpions every day. Green, where are you going? Uh... There you go. He does end up killing a lot of the Berserks. I think Green got a little overwhelmed there by all that. In the end, I mean, a better fight for Green obviously killed quite a few Berserks. Berserks are more expensive than the amount of Scorpions he lost, but... It does look like Green is maybe making a play here for, for Hopper's Wonder. Hmm. Hey, Teal, can we team? I want to be on the side of history that won. <laughs> And Sir Explosive Hopper says, that's weird. My brain keeps translating it as, I want to sneak transport with Trebs to your island. <laughs> so he knows. <laughs> it's a nice attempt from Red, though. He knew the only way it would work is if he got permission. And Sir Explosive, calls, Sir Explosive Hopper calls him out. He's like, I don't trust that for a second, bro. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Bet, no Trebs. Okay. Well, there's the transport. It's just halves. Like, now Sir Explosive Hopper is on to you. If you're going to go for it, at least go for it with Trebs. So if it works, you're a genius. Okay, we can be friends again. Lol. Sorry, misclick. All right, yeah. Lots of misclicks here. I'm, I'm a little sad we haven't seen more docking here from John, But I completely understand it. Like, they're all trying to, to get over here. But you've got to... I think you can dock this, right? Maybe I'm wrong and you cannot dock that area. Looks like you should be able to. I remember there was a dock here from somebody. Sorry, green. I got bored. This is purple. Yeah, purple had nothing, has nothing to do. They're just waiting for the wonder countdown. So it was just killing green. And that could be the end for green. You see the king running away now from the paladin. And the only hope here for green is that the, the units from purple just bump into each other a lot. And it is happening a little bit. 
But ultimately, it, that king should end up going down if there's no hiding spot. In 45 years, there it goes. Green will lose all the buildings at the same time. Feature this map. Only the second person to go down in this game, which is pretty crazy. And credit to Slimpy with some desperation here. Just trying anything to have a chance. Also, here's some elephant archers. I guess John's trying to make use of these things. More Teresa die, though. Like, you would need to clear up the shoreline, and you would need to get uh, a dock down. And not even a dock. Like, you need endless amounts of docks to deal with endless amounts of ships. That doesn't seem super realistic here, does it? He knew exactly what he needed to do in this game. The only hiccup here for Sir Explosive Hopper was that he didn't know that John was going to go for the wonder. And John getting that wonder up first was a real issue. But he ended up taking care of that pretty much himself, even though he had lots of help of fighting against John. <laughs> okay, Teal says, Gray, you said you watched all my videos, right? Gray hesitantly says, yeah. Oh my god. Do you recall what the lesson about diplomacy was in Regicide Rumble 4 game? Where's Gray's King? Where's Gray's King? Oh no, Gray's being attacked by purple and Gray panics. Gray panics and he's running away. And Gray thought he was going to be buddy-buddy with everybody. And Sir Explosive Hopper references his lesson about diplomacy, which is trust nobody. Great game, by the way. You should definitely check that. And now Teal says, I will remind you. It was something about never trust anyone. Yep, that's exactly what it was. But, I mean, it doesn't look like Hopper is actually in a position to take out that king. So Gray might actually be able to survive. Wait, how did I, here's a question. So, what I thought was going to happen was that Purple, Gray, and uh, Teal were all going to get the win in one year. What happens if Gray and Purple are fighting each other? Do they still share it? Oh! He didn't have Allied Victory on! He didn't have it on! He made them think that he had it on! But he didn't have it on for anyone. And that's what he meant. It wasn't a king snipe. It was about taking the win. And I mean, Purple said this like 20, 30 minutes ago. Purple was like, uh, he's like, I'm not sure if this is going to work. If it doesn't work, well played by you. So Purple recognized that was a possibility. Gray maybe didn't know. The way Hopper was speaking certainly made it feel like that he was intentionally tra like trying to go allied victory with them. He actually, yeah, that's true. He did enemy them at the very end. We might have actually had a pop-up on your screen there, and I missed it. Wow, interesting game there. Um, okay, he just declared war. Got it. Well, it was uh, a fun game on Chicken Nothing. Uh, we had our story time. We had a really cool map. It's crazy to think that this... Okay, this is bugged it right now. Uh, can we go back here without seeing that? <laughs> I was going to say, it's crazy to see, you know, how far we came from the start. The start of this map looked amazing. Look at that thing. Uh, shout out again to, to Killer Cow for making the map. I think the map's really good. I think that the, the thing that made this game the most unique, though, was the diplomacy aspect and was the fact that Wonder Victory was enabled. So uh, we're going to do that for all of our Regicide games going forward. Every single one we can. I, I like Regicide to be a talking point. But when you've got like 40, 50, 60 castles that can come up on any given time. And, you know, players want to play defensive. I think Wonder Victory can shake it up and change the, uh, the direction of the game. It was a great game. Fun map. I would definitely chicken it up again. Uh, well played Explosive Hopper. And excuse me as I wait to look at the final resources here. Oh my god. Okay. All right. Very overwhelming. And that hides it. Perfect. Uh, total KD in this game. Sir H. Lots of kills. 723 kills. 525 deaths. Uh, you had other players very active in this game. John had a very good game. Bobster, good recovery, right? Bobster was struggling for a bit against Orange. Orange was very aggressive. Gray also with 700 kills. I mean, Hopper... He only had 400, you know, compared to some of the other players out there. The green obviously got cleared up pretty early on, as did yellow against orange. They're probably not going to be happy with you, Slim Pie. Um, 
as for the resources brought in this game, we had quite a few boomers out there. Sir H, again, at the top there with the food and the gold. Uh, trade profit, gold collected, still pretty reasonable for players overall. And I'm not really sure if there's anything else we need to look for. Is there a wonder thing here? There, does Capstrage have wonders on this? Mm, sad times, no. <laughs> but I could tab into the actual game for that, and I don't know if this will be too helpful either. The normal game doesn't actually have that many relevant stats compared to Capture Age, but this will have it. Um, boom, the wonders. Also, there's something nice about the classic end screen, isn't it? it? It might just be the nostalgia, but I think the simplicity of this end screen, even though it lacks data, is always satisfying to look at. And I know from, you know, playing the game for a long time, you always have that the battle events, which don't seem to really be based on anything specific sometimes. But then you've got the wonder construction and the wonder destruction. Anyways, I uh, hope people on YouTube enjoyed this one. I hope uh, I'd be curious to hear people's thoughts on the maps. Enjoy your day. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Appreciate the support. And let me know if you want to see Chicken Nothing again. I Like, we did Cow Nothing two or three times. And every game was very different. That game ended primarily because of the Wonder situation. Could easily see a normal Diplo game pan out, depending on the players and whatnot. So, I mean, just at the end of the day, it is a Pilgrim style map or a Nomad style map where you get to choose your starting location. There's lots of stone, there's lots of gold. I think it could turn into a variety of different games. Um, so, it's pretty dynamic. Big fan. Yet again, thank you, Killer Cal. I appreciate you for making the map.